this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If you return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sen vs. the World. I'm Septum Sen. This is Kotobuki Jake. Hey! We're here to show you what we got. Ta -ta -ta. Yep. Show me what you got. I want to see what you got. Oh boy. Actually, oddly enough. Oh, no, I'm uh, lying. I don't okay. have a Minecraft order coming in. Um, I have one of their competitors shot on video order coming in. Uh, but uh, because they did a reprint of Mr. Ice Cream Man, which is kind of cool because it's been out of print yeah. and freaking expensive for a long time. So this mm. is my opportunity to get it. Any case, cool. go ahead, show us what you got. All right. Well, I have a theme this week, and my theme is Dollar Tree. <laughs> Last time I went, as I've said, they were pretty well stocked. I'd buy that for a dollar. And, exactly. And I have lately, and they were pretty well stocked on Blu-ray. I was impressed. I've never seen that amount of Blu-ray, even though they're buck twenty-five now. Ugh. But still. Um, so there were several that I debated getting because they were on DVD. But I was like, at the end of the day, they're a buck twenty-five. I want them. If I can convert them cheaply, I'll do it. Whatever. So first one is actually one that I've been wanting for a while. And it's partly because it tends to be really cheap that I guess I just never got around to it. That and the fact that it's I've, – I've never actually seen it. But – I've heard good things. I've heard it's something that I would probably like, and I certainly am a, a fond of some of the people involved. And that's a movie called Charlie Bartlett, which, Not of course, one. you know, you got uh, uh, Anton, yeah, the late Anton Yelchin, who um, passed away far too young, uh, in one of his probably better known roles. Uh, Hope Davis, Cat Dennings, and Robert Downey Jr. You know, that's a, that's a pretty good cast. I could deal with that. Um, and like I said, I've generally heard good things. So, um, yeah, I'd buy that for a dollar. It's a good movie. <laughs> I really enjoyed yeah. it. If I didn't have it already, I would have definitely picked it up. And I know I picked it up for mm -hmm. more than a dollar. <laughs> so, so you beat me in mm -hmm. that one. All right. So I've got two I'm going to show off because I really don't want to make this one like a whole one. Mm -hmm. well, that's my. <coughs> this came actually in the mail just today. Is my extra disc from the AVGN collection came in today, which is season thirteen and fourteen, uh, one sixty-five to one eighty-seven. Now, for those who are in the know, uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd released this thing they called the BFG collection. And there was an empty slot to add an extra disc when they expanded. And there you go. Now they don't have any more room for expansion, so the next one they release, yeah. You know. But it's been a little while because it's season 13 or 14, which shows that like two years have gone by pretty much <laughs> since their last release. So I am very uh, interested in going ahead and getting this. Uh, opening up the BFG collection and putting this into the collection. But this is uh, everything from um, uh, basically all the way up to 2020. 
So that's pretty impressive right there. Um, but the actual pickup here is uh, Shenmue 3. Now, if you look way back, you would have seen me pick up Shenmue 1 and 2 when they released on PlayStation 4. They re-released those first two games because this one was coming out via Kickstarter. So for those who aren't familiar, Shenmue is this game, um, kind of a precursor to the Yakuza series of games, that Sega put out on their Dreamcast, which was their last actual system when they were making consoles. And the Dreamcast was a pretty epic deal. It was a pretty awesome system. I didn't like the controller all that much, but the system was there. And Shenmue was this open world game where you played this dude whose father got killed and uh, you are out to find his killer and avenge him. So the first two games came out, then Sega ended the Dreamcast. The second game did get an Xbox release. And I gave my Xbox version of the game to Dave. The Then the third one, they didn't have enough money to do. So they finally came back years later, because we're talking PlayStation 2 era. We're in PlayStation 5 era right now. Um, they got a Kickstarter together to do the third game. And this came out to uh, a lot of disappointment, because it still doesn't finish the story. There's still at least another part left. But it's kind of cool to have it. I'm not yeah. sure I will go through these games or not. I played the first one some when I had a Dreamcast. And a lot of the other games like Yakuza and so on, they, they do this much better now. But this was epic for the day. The fact that you could, you know, get a job at the at the yard, move and stuff, make a make your salary go start fights, uh, go to the gachapons uh, machines in Japan and get the stuff, or go to the arcade and play Sega games. This was pretty awesome back in the day. Now, eh, it's hard to see whether it's awesome <laughs> or not. Right. Um, but as far as history is concerned, that's, that's bet a lot on gaming history right there. A lot of those games Sounds good. A lot this one. Sounds good. That'd be good. Um, so, a movie that is supposedly steeped in history, um, but obviously the sort of uh, <clears throat> version of history one gets when old Hollywood does an adaptation of a novel by James Mishner, <laughs> is a film called Hawaii which, as you can see on the cover, features Julie Andrews, Max von Sydow, and Richard Harris. And that right there is a pretty solid cast. Um, you've also got other folks in there. Um, oh. Music by Elmer Bernstein, uh, directed by George Roy Hill. Okay, so isn't he the one that did Butch Cassidy? I think he is. So um, that's pretty cool. You got uh, seven Oscar nominations for this film, apparently. Um, I never have seen this. I don't think I ever have read one of Missioner's novels. <laughs> I really need to read Chesapeake just because, you know. But I, I want to read Hawaii one of these days. It's, they're epic-length books, that's for sure. <laughs> and I think this is an epic-length. Yep, two hours and 40 minutes. Isn't that going to be nice? But, uh, you know, that's worth a buck. So, yeah, I'll get it. Okay. What was your first one, Jacob? My first, Charlie Bartlett. Okay. Yeah. It's easier to write them down. Hawaii. All right. Mm -hmm. Got that. So, my next one up is an animu. I got two Xanamus ah. this time. Wait, that's a lie. Three Animu. I forgot the giant one at the bottom. You liar. So I've been trying to condense my collection for a while. This one was one that I was really debating because the DVD set does have some sentimental value to me. But I decided, okay, I'll, I will give it another home in Dave's hands, as he bought it from me. 
And I went ahead and I condensed my collection for the Digi Sharat collection. I mean, on the sale, it was really dirt cheap. Yeah. And I was able to like condense because I have the set with the specials, which that's one set. Then the TV series, that's another set. And then the Winter Garden, Winter Garden, which is another thing. That one I have debated keeping in my collection because that's a terrible one. But well, um, now you don't have a choice, do you? Well, it's good because it's not taking up extra space. At least. <laughs> yeah, I can say that I can justify it by being on with some better stuff. I've been conflicted about this series a lot lately. I mean, uh, there's this one in particular. I'll play that right now. That's right. Warm, not fuzzy rice. <laughs> Warm, fluffy rice. Yeah, exactly. no. But uh, this is about this girl, De Dejiko, uh, who is a princess from another planet, lands with her sister, Puchiko. And they go to this game store. And give me one moment. I'm going to be changing hair. And then that goes back. There we go. Uh, and Puchiko and Digico are going to take over the world or some bullshit like that. And they've got their, uh, they've got their uh, sidekick. God, what was his name? Um... Man, I was doing well, but uh, <laughs> but their sidekick with them, which is kind of a round, weird-looking thing, and they get a job working at Gamers, which is unfortunately no longer in Akibara. It's shut down, but um, which was one of my dreams. If I ever went to Japan, I would go to Gamers, but it doesn't exist anymore. But it was a game oh. store, and uh, they have various adventures while they're there with, of course, the other game store employee, uh, employee Robbie and Rose, which uh, she is, uh, she's something. Um, <laughs> it's a very wacky series. It's got some very offbeat humor. Like I said, I did not like the original series, but it grew on me over time. So it's all right. Uh, I really do enjoy it as a staple of anime. Uh, the original series was basically <laughs> advertising for gamers, so it's great to have it around just as a, it's, um, it's amazing it's stuck around. Really and truly, this is something that was celebrated by a lot of early, uh, like, anime nerds in the 90s celebrated this sort of thing. Or, I should say early 2000s. Somewhere in there. But, so that, uh, one, that one does not have Ponyo Ponyo, right? Uh, no. It okay. doesn't. It has the, and sadly, the summer, Christmas, flower viewing, the summer vacation and omake specials and winter garden okay <clears throat> um and of course there's a elusive digi sharat nyo which yeah, will know, never which, finish which will never uh, finish it, that needs a release that could use a full release instead of a half release like it got and you could fit the whole thing on this because they're fairly short episodes so you could fit all of it on something like this shoot put Make it a little bit wider and put the uh, the other Digi Sharat series on it, and then you'd right. be good. You'd be golden. You'd have all of it. Right. I, I don't know. Uh, they should. I don't know why Sentai is like they they will get pieces of a franchise and don't try very hard to get the whole thing. It seems, but it's weird. I don't know. But I mean, it really yeah. that Fate Prisma Ilia series. I hate that they've got the first two seasons. They got the third, and then Funimation has the rights to the third, and they're only streaming it. They're not releasing it on physical. Yeah. Well, you know what? That was probably more related to uh, it being uh, tied into Anaplex somehow, and, you know, they probably lost the rights to it. So um, next one is one that theoretically seems like it has a uh, – anime-ish, animu-ish uh, plot d to it. I haven't actually seen this, but I've heard a lot about it and I've been wanting to see it. And that is called Lars and the Real Girl, which you've got Ryan Gosling, Emily Mortimer, Paul Schneider, Patricia Clarkson, and a blow-up doll. Um, <laughs> 
And uh, it's supposedly pretty darn good. I, I, I like said, I, have you seen this one yet? Mm-mm, not at all. No. Uh, but one day, <laughs> and again, you know, it's, again, this was when I was like, okay, I'll probably one day get it on Blu-ray. <laughs> but in the meantime, oh, I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> this next one is a Plan 9 pickup. Oh. And it's one, I saw it for very cheap. I mean, it was like three bucks. It's a little bit smashed, but that's okay for three bucks. It's not a bad deal for it. And that is Exit Through the Gift Shop, a Banksy film. Now, I had to hold off, of course, like I always do for used stuff, (laughs) which is, you know, because I don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's, you know, it's all paper. So, you know, it's in a paper sleeve, which doesn't help me either, but I do like that they have the street art on the side. And this is probably one of the only films Banksy has ever made. Because a friend of his decided he was going to make a documentary at, at the behest of Banksy about street art. It turned out to be a real shit show. So he said, okay, I'm going to take the footage. and I'm going to edit it myself and make a, a real one. <clears throat> and then went on to also film his friend's rise to power. Um, it does have what they call the lawyer's edit of Life Remote Control, which was the friend's uh, documentary. Which, from the way they described it, is that's that's a good thing. <laughs> but it's a, it is a good film. It is a great do- street art documentary. I wanted it when I saw it, and I love the cover. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. So it's just really kind of cool to have this to see the movement where it used to be just this counterculture thing, and then it became part of the culture. Right. That just shows you how it is. I mean, things just get absorbed in the money machine. It's just how it, how it can be. Yes, indeed. And that actually is an interesting segue into my next show. This is actually a full season of television entitled Taboo, which is stars uh, Tom Hardy. And um, you've got a lot of people in here, some very intriguing names as well. You've got Stephen Graham. You've got uh, Franca Patente, Jonathan Price, uh, a few other folks in there. Um, I try to remember, this is a BBC co-production. I'm trying to remember where it aired here. Do you remember? I know it aired... I want to say it was an HBO series. Um, But whatever the case, it's it's an historical drama. Like I said, this is the entirety of season one. I don't remember how many seasons there were. But anytime you find a full season of television for a buck or $1.25, it's probably worth looking into. And again, this was already on my radar. I was curious about it. And and I saw that and I was like, Yep, I'm getting that. <laughs> of course, I'll probably end up liking it and going, okay, I want the rest of the show. And dang it, I can't get it. You know, who knows? <laughs> it is such a hard investment sometimes. Yeah. I mean, at first, I remember looking at it when I was in, um, when I was first collecting. I was like, ooh, that's just more material I have. It's more hours of entertainment. Yeah. And, and now I'm like, oh, my God, that's more hours of entertainment. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Your many hours of enjoyment spent watching Have Gun Will Travel. <laughs> well, well, not mine anymore. <laughs> so let's take a look at something else, something completely different. So some things you just got to, you, you look at and you go, I kind of want this, but I don't want it for that price. So the price I was willing to go down to was five bucks. That was for the film Hellboy, the uh, remake. Ah. So I had heard about this, and I kind of like Hellboy, but I really like the, um, well, the other one that they Guillermo did, del Toro the Toro one. Yeah, Ron Perlman was the perfect Hellboy. Now, I've heard good things about this. I've heard this one's uh, more loyal to the comic in many ways. So I am curious about it. 
And five dollars was enough to um, allow me to be curious. It also comes with a three-part documentary on it uh, called uh, Tales of the Wild Hunt, Hellboy Reborn. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, Hellboy is like this uh, demon that came through a portal raised by humans, and uh, he becomes sort of like a supernatural detective. The comic is pretty gritty, and uh, I really like it. It's kind of a, almost a noir quality for a comic book. And the movies were really good. I've heard this one was okay, but a lot of people, I think, were a little bit too attached to the Del Toro version of this for it to really take off. But I'll see for myself whether it's good or bad when I watch it eventually. <laughs> All right, all right. <clears throat> okay, my next one is an odd one. And for the life of me, I'm actually not sure if I've seen it. I know I saw a very similarly titled movie that came out around the same time. And I know I've seen a lot of stuff that borrows from this same story. Not the least of all, Dragon Ball. But our <clears throat> wild and crazy director, Stephen Chow, who did the wonderful uh, martial arts flick uh, Kung Fu Hustle, and who also did one of the highest grossing films in Chinese history with The Mermaid, did um, this take on the famed story Journey to the West. <laughs> Um, which I do love the cover there. That's a pretty cool cover art. Um, again, for the life of me, I cannot remember if I saw this version. But I feel like there was a movie with Jackie Chan that came out around the same time that was the same story. And I don't think this is it. But I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> But whatever the case, it is a Stephen Chow film. So if nothing else, I will probably be entertained. <laughs> Very cool. Mm -hmm. So I have a whole stack of these turned down. <laughs> That's like a hit and O, and I'm like, you know, I might as well just get on it. <laughs> get on with it. So I've got here One Piece, the movie 3D2Ys. 2Y. Ah. Um, so about Luffy kind of, uh, overcoming, spoiler, Ace's death, <laughs> but, um, uh, I have not watched any but one of the One Piece movies. I haven't really watched much of the show past Water 7. But I do need to get back into it again because I think I've got more in front of me now than I have behind me again. But I haven't really had an interest in watching it since I stopped running the uh, One Piece RPG game because then I had no reason to motivate myself to create stuff. <laughs> I ran one. Yeah, I did. I did run a One Piece game, didn't you I? You did, yeah. It's like, I said to myself, why would I run a One Piece game? I hate One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yet I collect it anyway. <laughs> but I know there are a lot of fans of the series out here. I know a lot of people love Luffy. I hate Luffy. I don't mind the rest of the characters, but I hate Luffy. <laughs> <laughs> so what can one do? <laughs> what can one do? Exactly. All right. My last two I have seen. Or definitely have seen. This was one that got a lot, a lot, a lot of buzz. Um, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and mention, we've mentioned before, sometimes Dollar Tree has really weird stuff from low, like, indie labels. And this uh, Journey to the West was a magnet release. They tend to have a fair number of magnet releases. And I often grab those, because when do you really see those in the wild? 
But one that we've mentioned a few times is uh, Magnolia. You know, we they you don't see Magnolia in the wild very often, so it's always cool when you do. And this is one that um, I actually did watch when it came out because it got a lot of buzz. Or not when it came when it came out on um, DVD, and um, it's a documentary. Oh, that I just threw off the table. Um, it's a documentary called The Wolf Pack, which is about a group of brothers raised in a unusual <laughs> situation. Let's just put it that way. Uh, in an apartment in Manhattan. Um, and they are really big fans of movies. As you can kind of see, you've got that Reservoir Dogs there. They got a picture on the back that's like the lineup from Usual Suspects. Apparently, even though they were strangely sheltered from the world, they were able to watch a whole, whole, whole lot of movies and get their um, a lot of their, um, I guess, knowledge from that, um, and became big fans of movies in the process. Um, it's an interesting documentary. I wasn't blown away by it the way that I was led to believe I should be. Um, <laughs> but again, find that in the wild for a dollar. Well, yeah, well, a dollar twenty-five. Yeah, yeah I get it. Not bad. Yeah. So this one is from a site that no longer exists, or if it does exist. I think it does, but they only allow a select clientele, and I am not good at it. Oh. And that was a place that did a lot of mod uh, DVDs, usually from Netflix titles. And they did amazing t They did amazing quality. Like, uh, that's how I got the rest of the Scream series, which is not in physical print, um, but uh, which is st Stinky Tuna that did that. So I ended up also getting Pee Wee's Big Holiday on this. It looks like an official Netflix Blu-ray, especially where it says not for resale. So it makes me wonder if this was one of their, that whether they had, these had fallen off the truck or something, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Because I know Netflix yeah. at one time still produced some physical Blu-rays and DVDs for their hard disk customers. I don't think they do it now, but they used to. So it's possible that this could be along that line, especially with some of the stuff that's on it. I don't know how legit their stuff is, but that is a very, for something that's never going to come to physical media, it's good to have it. I have seen it. Um, it is, of course, a return to uh, a Pee Wee to the big, well, to the Netflix screen as he goes on a, a summer vacation, essentially. And it's a long vacation. It kind of has a similar feel to uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which is what they were going for. And uh, I did really, I did really enjoy it. I thought it was fun. It wasn't as good as Big Adventure, but. I think it was better than um, the second one, which was the, um, what was it? Uh, the big Star Top Pee Wee. Yeah, Big Top Pee Wee. So still pretty good. I was hoping that we could get more out of it. I'm guessing this didn't do well enough to continue stuff. But it's still fun as movies go. Good times. It's going to be sad. Probably in 10 years, if you want physical media, it's only going to be stuff like this. You'll either stream it or you don't. <laughs> I'm sure there will still be outlets for physical media, but not as many, that's for sure. It's very annoying. So my last one is one that, I, again, I, I debated it because the likelihood that I would pick it up one day at Dollar Tree on Blu-ray is reasonably high. <laughs> But I I figured I'd go ahead and grab it. And this was an Oscar-nominated film, if I remember correctly. I think it had a single nod for Best Actress because Meryl Streep. And that is a movie called Florence Foster Jenkins, 
which uh, is written, directed by Stephen Frears, who is an excellent director. And yeah, Hugh Grant, uh, Meryl Streep, and I am kicking myself. I can't remember that dude's name. Do you remember that dude's name? Which one? I'm just the dude Hugh there. Hiding, <laughs> no, the one hiding behind the flowers. Uh, no clue. <laughs> ah, man. I'm trying to, I know he was in uh, Dr. Horrible. And, uh, <laughs> but at any rate, the film is about Florence Foster Jenkins, uh, a socialite who wants to be an opera star, but has no talent to be an opera star. Simon Helberg's the guy's name. Okay. Rebecca Ferguson's in there as well. Anyway, um, it's basically one of those movies about, um, People who get a shot at following their dreams, even though doing so causes a living, waking nightmare for those around them. <laughs> That's a somewhat sardonic take on the plot, but there you go. <laughs> but it was an entertaining enough film. And, I, you know, like I said, you know, it was worth, worth every penny. <laughs> All right. All right. Time well, for you, Bingham. Big reveal. I got the limited edition of Food Wars. So, Woo! Food Wars is one that is an odd series. It is a cooking series, but it has a lot of strange elements and reactions to food. Uh, the fourth arc is a continuation of the tournament arc that they had in season three. And season three ended on quite the cliffhanger, so I was waiting for season four. I've heard bad things about season four, but I have the, the premium editions of the first three. Matter of fact, the first two I got for 20 apiece before they went you out. You lucked out. Which is why I ended up buying the third one at full price, unfortunately. And I bought the fourth one at full price because I want the whole set. And I'm hoping that the acquisition by AMC does not prevent the premium or even release of, C of Plate 5. Because that would actually complete the series. And I want all five of them in these nice additions. So let's go ahead. And I'm going to be unboxing today. I've got a Rosie on my arm. Miss Rosie, you want to unbox for me? You got claws. Hey, Rosie. You can take those. See, there's a cat. Yep. Yeah, she right. said, you said box. Where's my box? Yeah, you want the box, don't you? Like, I want to love on you. Even though it's... This is why you're just like... What's that? What's that? <laughs> All right. Ugh. Okay, so we got our... Again, they're set like bento boxes. Mm -hmm. The first two, they, they took out all the stops for the first two. These last two already... I mean, this one feels a lot like the, the third one, which is kind of basic. But that's all right. Right. So, of course, you lift off the top. It does have a different, like, coloration than the previous ones. And, of course, you've got that lovely art there on the sides. Mm-hmm. And you pull up in the tab, and you've got your set. So you pull that open. It's got both of these. Let's mm -hmm. go ahead and show the artwork for the other. Right there. So you got your Blu-ray and your DVD set in that side. So I'll assume the other side has the extras. And it does. That's a little slow. Ah. I might have to... Did it okay, refocused. Good. So, first thing. Made in China, of course. You've got this uh, kind of item here. I'm going to see if I can untape it. I don't like to take them fully out 
I'm a collector, which means it doesn't make sense, but I'm just like, no, I don't want to take out any of the stuff that you're supposed to play with. Okay. Because then it ruins the collection value. This kind of got some scratchy, scritchy scratches on it because it's been living around, but it's a base. You put the sun here in the base. You got your little standy mm -hmm. there, which is kind of cool. You're sadly never leaving the box, but this <laughs> mm -hmm. You've got a little kitty cat pen. See, Rosie? Mm -hmm. I don't know why they need the little ribbons there. And then, of course, you have a little, uh, there's some meticulousness to it. I don't know if y'all can see it. See how it kind of shifts a little bit? Right. But this allows me to continue the Food War series. But uh, one more to go. And then... Very good. That ends our uh, Food Wars journey, which will be good because that's <laughs> a long dedication to premium sets. <laughs> you say that, and then after a gap of five years, they'll come out with season six. Maybe. But things have these days, the way they're going, it's all about reviving this and that. But that's all we have for you this time. Mm -hmm. Until season six of Septum Sen versus the World. Yeah. Which is what? Let's see. Actually, be a minute. We were what? If we go by years, we started. What is this? Year four or five? I think it's four. Was it. Mm. Uh, I can't remember. We had an anniversary, and I can't remember what the heck it was. <laughs> but I think uh, it was five. we got to be close to five if we haven't uh, right. passed it. Because I think we're older than Inside Movies Galore. No, maybe not. I don't know. No, we are. We are. Uh, they're turning four this year, uh, or five. I have to look that up too before Tuesday. But uh, we're going to have some fun. But uh, stay tuned. Of course, we haven't checked out the birthday discussion of the Tingler and Dragonheart. You should. Dragonheart yeah. is going to be on uh, Delusions of Grandeur's site, which is below. And uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> Tingler will be on Inside Movies Galore. So I think it's yeah. a good one. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. Mm hmm Subscribe, like, comment, share, all that jazz, and we'll see you <laughs> on the next one. Bye-bye. Goodbye.